here. We're going to jump over to Lindell TV where money is being made and spent. Um, this is uh, this is uh, over here. We got to, this is Will Johnson on, on his show. Let's talk about it. We're not going to do anything about it, but hey, let's talk about it. We're going to talk about it. I want to talk about it. You want to talk about it. Let's talk about it. Um, hopefully sex is not the topic because uh, it will be disappointing for everyone involved, I think, pretty much. Okay, here we go. This is, oh, I got to turn his audio on. This is very short. And the title of this is Confirmed Biden Has Lost His Mind. Now, before this man begins speaking, I want to remind you that he works for Mike Pillow. Joe Biden has lost his everlasting mind. Ever, ever loving mind. His ever loving mind uh, is the phrase uh, or fucking mind, uh, which is another way of saying in my book, ever loving. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, <laughs> everlasting mind would be that it, it, obviously you can't. I guess you're saying he's not demented, that he doesn't have dementia, that he's not uh, he does he's not senile because he has an everlasting <clears throat> mind. Okay, cool. Uh, after that, it's a minor fuck up. You know what I mean? When you're attacking someone for verbal flubs, keep those to a minimum. I'm sure this is the last one we're going to see happen to anybody. And the demon crash, they're all scrambling right now. Oh my goodness, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Oh, the and I think he said demon crats. Which I guess that he means me, and as a demon, demoncrat is it? Let's see if I can. Um, do we have a? Um, let's see. Yeah. Brrr. Yes, uh, you're obviously talking about me. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, please, please go on. As a demoncrat, I'm I'm upset. I don't I don't feel upset, but yeah, me, you know me better than I know me. We're handing this to Trump on a silver platter. Handing what to Trump on a silver platter? Br Biden's ever loving my. I'm sorry. I, I I can't. I'm not able to think. These horns are too heavy. Um, you know what's really interesting is that. Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, I I like to think that I do. I mean, I I try to keep things interesting. You know what? It, that's the interesting thing to me is that things don't even have to be interesting. I can just make them that way. <laughs> it's called wit, and it's spontaneous. That everything that they've been doing to President Trump has actually backfired on him, and is coming back around to roost. They're like, I see. So it it's inefficient, but the target is the same. I see. So it it backfired on us, but it's coming back to roost. Okay. The the hens come back to roost. The hens coming back to roost. Okay. I don't I don't know. Something about bird brain. Think about this. I'm trying. I'm I'm really really trying. The documents that President Trump took to Mar-a-Lago with him. Uh-huh. As president, you have up to five years to go through those documents. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, no, you, no, 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 you don't. You do not have up to five years to go through those documents. You don't get to keep. No president gets to keep whatever classified documents they want for five years on their own property without telling anyone or hiding them. No. No. <laughs> I, I, I don't know where he got that from. He'll probably go uh, something in the Presidential Records Act, whatever. I think it's like they've got five years to get you your shit for your library. Uh, five years. Five years. To go through the documents and hand them over to the archives. No. No, no, no. Not if they're, uh, not if they're top secret. That they, The top secret documents aren't about being archived. Okay. Archive documents are your own personal notes or those kind of things or in the case of like George H.W.'s uh, Bush's journal or something like that. Um, and if you want to believe that, then why was there a Sox case in, in the, you know, before he left office, essentially, right? or like right after he left office with Clinton? Um, but, you know, it wasn't, they didn't wait five years to ask for the tapes back of uh, Bill Clinton's conversations with his biographer. Just silly. This is just silly. That's not based on anything. Just made up. 
It's Gonzo's birthday? Wait a second. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gonzo. What's up, man? How you doing? Hope you're well and you have a great holiday, family holiday and you're all hanging out and you're having a good time and you have cake and everything else and stuff. Happy birthday to you. All right. Thank you very much. All right. They kept they keep saying that President Trump wasn't cooperating. Well, no, no, I mean, initially he wasn't cooperating. Now we know he was conspiring to keep the things illegally. Which is a bunch of BS, because remember the FBI showed up to President Trump's Mar-a-Lago home not once, but twice. This is just a recap for those that don't remember this. Right, they were there to pick up stuff legally the first time, and then he hid more of the stuff. I'm sure he'll... Bring it home. It's just, we got a minute left. The first time they showed up, they said, Mr. President, everything is in order. Well, if you would, Mr. President, just put a padlock on this door. No, oh dear. Oh dear, my friend. No, no, no. The, the, the FBI does not show up and say, put a padlock on something. First of all, that wasn't the FBI you were talking about. That's the, the representatives from the Justice Department and NARA. It wasn't the FBI. And, and the idea was is that you're going to go through your shit, but that you've got these things stored in an unlocked room. Please put another lock on it, and we'll be back in two weeks to get everything that's classified. You'll have somebody on your staff go through it and pull anything else that isn't there. we got a list of things we w that are in there. We would like you to—we're pretty sure you have them, so check them off, and here you go. And then that's when the conspiracy and stuff— Like, this is just—this isn't even close to the truth. I, I mean, what—this is kind of— uh, yeah, as, as programming goes, this is exactly what I would expect from Lindell TV, though. I got to say, it, it, today's, we're, today's phrase is on brand. For these particular documents that are here. Uh-huh, you mean the classified documents he didn't have a right to? Why did they Why did they even come there in the first place? He's got five years. Why didn't he just tell them, I, you're four and a half years early. Go fuck yourself. What lock? Put him on the door. What? They don't trust it with the president who has the right to have them for another five years? Right? You remember that? Yes, but I also remember that, like, Inna Yashishin was coming to Mar-a-Lago posing as a Rothschild, and there was, before they had even done that, and she had access to that room, and there was a copy machine in the fucking room. And then they raided his home again because they could not- They didn't raid his home at all. They had a lawful search warrant. Nobody came into a fucking skylight. Nobody fucking repelled into the place. It wasn't the end of Christmas vacation. You fucking dunce. They they served a search warrant. Why would they have to do that if he's got... I, I, I don't understand. I, I got four and a quarter years left. I find the documents that, ex what I believe, and I said this yesterday, that exposes all of them. All, all of them. So they, they only, they came there. They, they, ra they raided Mar-a-Lago, according to you, the president's rental property that he had uh, public gatherings at, where uh, um, top secret intel, including human intel, which would give away the, one would think, the names and identities of uh, spies or sources we had in other countries, dangerous countries. And they, but they, they came in there. There was all that shit there because he had the right to have it for another four years, but they took out all the stuff that incriminated them. That's all they took. Okay. So what are they showing him in the skiff in Florida, which was what the meeting today was about? I'm sorry. I forgot I was talking to a crazy person. Exposes what the FBI have been doing. Exposes what the federal government has been doing. Someone. So he was just hanging on to that stuff. He, he wasn't telling the world what they were doing? No? So, so tr let, me, let, me, let me get this right. After Trump left the White House and he was no longer president and he was, I guess, in this thing where he was going to, I guess, maybe get magically put back in or something, but he was just hanging on to these documents so for... To not, and he wasn't telling the American people. He was golfing. He was having meetings with the Saudis. 
his son-in-law and his daughter were signing a deal with them. And so he was he was keeping what he believed to be incriminating doc documents about what the FBI was doing illegally secret from the American people so that he could what? One has these documents and they're saying that President Trump has to have the documents. He's the one that he has to have them. And they keep going to Mar-a-Lago and they can't find the documents that they're looking for. Oh dear. Okay, uh, real quick. They, they found the documents they were looking for. They didn't find all the documents that they were looking for because he flew a bunch of boxes up to Bedminster and they trusted his lawyer to look through that space and they have not served a uh, warrant on that. Also, uh, there was a locked closet at Mar-a-Lago in his office that was hidden that they pretended they didn't have the key to and Trump actually left town with the key. He's the only person who has it so that nobody could get into it without breaking into it. And he knew that they were probably politically afraid to do that. So it could, I'm just, I'm just saying, let me throw this out there that maybe the reason he, they couldn't find some of the documents is because he stole them and he's still hiding them. And because they didn't, I don't know, I'm going to throw it out there. Uh, exhume the coffin his ex-wife is allegedly being buried in even though she was cremated after falling down a flight of steps or as we like to call it around here the Russian flu this is the reason why they're saying that President Trump is not cooperating because they're saying President Trump has documents that are not in his possession and they're saying that he's not cooperating because he won't give them the documents that he don't have Okay, sorry. I was trying. <laughs> I was trying really hard. I was. I was trying to take this seriously and and address this. <laughs> now I just got stuck in the boomerang chicken, the hens coming home to roost thing. Uh, okay, first of all, he doesn't have uh, some of the documents anymore because they were taken uh, away from him. He's asking for access to them in court today. Uh, so that I guess he can he can argue that he had a right to some of them or some shit like that, but he wants to look at all of them again and take notes, which they won't let him do, <laughs> so that he can sell the notes at, to a foreign power or or use them to leverage you know loans or aid from uh, our enemies uh, at home and abroad, I suppose, and uh, and I and I guess maybe use some of that information which they took back. He can get access to looking at it to maybe. Maybe there's like some dirty pictures of what the FBI has been doing on their weekends and he just wants to sketch out what they're doing and then he's going to blackmail them with the sketches. <laughs> Sorry, this is so stupid. Make it make sense. I can't. I can't. I, I cannot. <laughs> I tried. I really did. I The whole video. I really was trying, sir. I really was, Will Johnson. Um, I got to say, I was like, I was... And I'm good at making shit make sense. I really am. But th this... This doesn't. That's the. I I can't get you out of. I I can't get you out of the box you've packed yourself in. I can't do it. Make it make sense. No, I, I'm not. I'm not going to. I I will. I now I'm mad. Now I'm being belligerent. I refuse to. Now, I had a whole bunch of videos that I want to share with you. We are going to take your phone calls. It is Friday. So if you want to give me a call to talk about this insanity, how the demon crats are losing their everlasting minds. He had to, he had to do it on the way out too, didn't he? He had to, he had to with three seconds left in the fucking video. He had to say everlasting again, didn't he? They're not gobstoppers. You dumb motherfucker. It's ever loving mine. It's your ever loving mine. Oh, God damn it. Or your fucking mind, one or the other. And obviously, because it's Lindell TV and everybody's a faux Christian over there, I get it. Ever, your ever loving mind. The, the phrase is ever loving. Now I got to call this motherfucker on his show and try not to swear when I go, okay, the phrase is ever loving mind, not everlasting, you weirdo. Secondly, uh, I would love to try and make your gibberish make sense to you, but it doesn't. You can't polish a turd, sir. 
they've kind of already lost their minds. They really have. Well, I, I mean, they've been listening to you, so I guess maybe that'd be the cause. Also, I guess I have to, we're going to have to hunt down this guy's number. I'm going to have to, if he's going to take calls, I might have to call and ask. My, I have, a, I've, I have, if I may, sir, I have some notes. I have no idea when he's on, but we'll find out. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Will Johnson and the, the Brain Trust at uh, Lindell TV.